The canton of Appenzell is one of Switzerland's most traditional regions. In fact, it's so traditional that Appenzellers are the butt of many jokes by sophisticates in big city Switzerland. The stubborn survival of local traditions is what makes this such a great place to visit. Switzerland achieved full independence by 1648. That was a full 200 years before the democratic revolutions of 1848 swept through the rest of Europe. In some ways, Switzerland's independence isolated it from European high culture. Back then, it took a rich nobility or the Roman Catholic Church to pay for big-time cultural achievements. So, instead of grand palaces and cathedrals, we can see how Swiss culture showed off on a small and personal scale. The Appenzell Folk Museum gives travelers a great peek into the cow culture. You'll see traditional costumes, living rooms, art, and crafts. The laissez-faire Swiss Confederation allowed each canton to have its own religion, language, economic planning, and so on. In Appenzell, entire villages met in the town squares to vote, and they still do. Historically, only the men voted by raising the family sword. It wasn't until 1990 that Appenzell women, even without swords, were given full voting privileges. The museum's collection is a folksy reminder that this canton stays close to its roots. The town of Appenzell is a handy base for exploring the area. This has been the capital of the canton for 400 years, and many of the buildings date back to that time. Here in traditional Appenzell, a local yodel fest is a great outing. Back before email and cell phones, yodeling was the way one goat herder communicated with another across isolated alpine pastures. Swiss folk culture is most vivid on the exciting days late in the summer when the farmers parade through town as they march their cows and goats from the high pastures home to the barn for the winter. Life jolts to a halt in town as shoppers and shopkeepers alike run to the street. The three best milk cows proudly swing the biggest bells. And for this impromptu festival, school's out. This traditional dairy farming, so securely a part of our image of Switzerland, really couldn't survive today without a little help. Traditional farmers get subsidies from the government to guarantee this part of the Swiss heritage doesn't go the way of the small farm in America. In Switzerland, people don't call these scenic wonderlands national parks. They call them simply home. Rather than spend the night in town, we're sleeping high in the Alps. This gondola takes us from Vassaran to the summit of Ebenalp. In the Alps, locals know that the weather blows in and the weather blows out. And a little rain dampens no one's holiday spirit. To enjoy Europe's alpine thrills to the max, we're not only getting off the beaten path, we're sleeping off the beaten path in a mountain hut. Tonight, we're bedding down with the goats. Well, at least near the goats, at Guesthouse Asher. The hut is actually built onto the cliffside. Its back wall is the mountain. Imagine, you can hike from France to Slovenia, finding a hut or remote village for each overnight and never come out of these Alps. Guesthouse Asher isn't just any hut. It was originally built to house pilgrims who came here to pray with a hermit monk. Hermit monks lived in this cave for about 200 years until 1853. This is their church the Wildkirchli. Pilgrims came from all over this part of Switzerland to worship here, long before the lift was around to make the trip an easy one. 
Today, the monks are long gone, but Guesthouse Asher still houses pilgrims, like us, communing with nature.